What's going on, you 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi, and today I'm doing this short video to give you some great presentation tips for your 3D art portfolio. This video actually started as a portfolio review for my man Jordan here, and I wanted to bring not only value to him, but also bring value to a lot of you guys out there that I feel could be in a similar position. I actually look at a lot of portfolios and I do see that uh, there are a lot of talented artists out there that basically have the modeling and even the texturing down, but are missing just a little bit of that extra polish in the presentation. And I feel like 5% extra work allocated towards the presentation side could lead to a 30, 40, or even 50% uh, increase in the overall quality of those images when you're posting them to your online portfolio. Let's go ahead and begin here. I'm gonna focus on actually two of his pieces. The first one that I wanna to touch upon are these two different cars. Overall, the modeling and overall texturing is relatively good. Just the presentation, a little bit of the lighting could actually be improved. The main thing here that I do wanna point out, especially when you have multiple uh, complex assets like this, is that I would tend to stay away from having both of these very complicated assets into one shot. If you're gonna do something like this, what I would opt to do is maybe have one vehicle in the foreground and then have the other vehicle in the background adding some depth of field. So basically you're getting to focus on one asset at a time. What tends to happen, especially as you become a better modeler, you want to show off all this detail that you create, but sometimes just like little few details could be a bad thing. Too many details, especially in one shot, could be a little bit distracting. Anytime that you look at great design work, for example, even if it's hard surface, what you typically find is areas of concentrated detail but you also find areas of rest, right? So if you bombard the viewer with too many details in a shot, uh, that could actually be a detriment and not actually really help your work too much. So one of the things that I was uh, looking at here is basically this shot. And what I wanted to do is break down some of the improvements that Jordan could go ahead and incorporate into this. One of them is this plane here. This is very distracting. So if you wanted to go more with that type of studio lighting environment, this is something that you could do. And what I actually did is just go on Google and look for some images of this vehicle to see uh, how it could be presented a little bit better. This is the same vehicle that Jordan modeled. And one of the things you notice is that you really don't see that ground plane. This is more of a studio setup. This is actually very easy to set up. Uh, one of the options that you do have most packages will allow you to basically render just a shadow and basically not include any geometry. That can be done via most shaders in 3D packages. The other thing that you could do to get more of a studio a setup for a vehicle like this is basically have a ground plane and a wall. But between that wall and that ground plane, you take that edge and you actually bevel it. And that's going to create that fall off that most photographers backdrops have where they're basically shooting at the subject, but you really can't see that hard line that's basically between the wall and the floor. And that really makes for a more seamless transition and really puts a lot more focus onto your subject. If you wanted to ground your vehicle in reality, you do have a couple other options. Uh, one would be to basically download a HDRI image along with the plate uh, Polygon Haven, I'll go ahead and link the website in the description of the video, but Polygon Haven does have not only HDRI images, but also backplates where you could easily take that HDRI image, use it to light your environment sphere, but also have a backplate shot just for that environment sphere. So you could really just get the best of both worlds where you have the lighting matching the backplate uh, for your image. The other option to this is actually just download models themselves as far as the environments. I know a lot of artists that model the foreground objects and they don't want to go through the laborious process of having to essentially model 
a detailed environment. So what they'll do is they'll download a model and use that instead of using the HDRI and backplate solution. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at his helmet. So right here, he did an incredible job as far as the modeling execution. And you see here that he did this pretty much seamlessly. So I like this presentation a lot better than that previous render of the car where you really can't see that hard line, which a lot of times detracts from that foreground object. Overall, these renders are pretty strong. The only thing that does catch me off guard a little bit is pretty much the placement of this helmet in relationship to this ground plane. Uh, so it looks like it's just hovering right over the ground plane. What I would do is either have the helmet floating or commit it and put it right on that ground plane so it actually sits. Right now, the helmet looks like it's elevating slightly and that is a little distracting. Uh, I do like some of these renders a lot more than others. For example, this one, uh, you see this little bit of rim light here. So that is a really nice touch. One recommendation I have for you, Jordan, really for anybody that's struggling a little bit to figure out great presentation techniques for a certain asset is actually do a little bit of research online. So initially I did go through and look at helmets online, but I just found a lot of shopping results on Google. And then I remembered about Instagram. So Instagram is an app that originally started with photography. So you have a lot of great product photography that a lot of times is a little bit different than what pops up on Google results. So what I did is I actually pulled up some bike helmets within Instagram and that really gave me a lot of greater ideas on how to better basically give you some constructive criticism. So let's see what I pulled up on Instagram and see if we can borrow some of those ideas from the gram and pour them over and see how we could basically strengthen up your presentation. The first image that I have here is very similar to that car image where you have a very plain background. And sometimes there is beauty and simplicity is that that plain background with the correct number of lights uh, really lets you focus and makes that object pop. This first image here, this is almost like a studio setup where the background is pretty much non-existent and lets you focus on this foreground object. You see that the lighting is very well done uh, and they have pretty much this nice kind of rim lighting really accentuating the top of the helmet. Another option that you have here is ground this in reality by essentially using image-based lighting. Obviously, you see that on the reflection of the visor. And also, it is mounted on a person, and you don't really have to model the character at this point if you didn't want to go into that full detail. But just having part of the shoulders, maybe download the model, uh, that would really just ground not only the object in an environment, but place that object on an actual human. And that could actually work very good for presentation purposes. The last example of a possible presentation style is to take that helmet and actually ground it in a ground plane and also have a slight background, but use plenty of depth of field to just simply blur out that background. And that way it's actually grounding that object into a scene even though it's very muted as far as those background elements. So that's all the information that I wanted to cover. Hopefully that helps you out, Jordan, and really anybody that's watching there that wants to improve on their presentations, and that way they can have stronger looking pieces on their portfolio that gets a little bit more visual traction. And getting a portfolio review from a professional is something that is extremely advantageous, especially when you're starting to learn there are a lot of things that somebody with a trained eye that's been doing this for a while could actually spot right away and point you in the right direction, saving you a lot of time going through trial and error on your own. And this is a service that I offer to all my students in my Maya Heart Surface Modeling course, as well as access to a private Discord group. So I try to put a lot of extra value besides the course content. If this is something that might interest you, I will have it in the pinned comment down below. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this video. And until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.